Hello everyone, this is Sandeep Sharma here. So in the last video which I put up last week, I talked about the general strategy points regarding your NEET PG preparation. Uh, there were a lot of messages I got in my inbox, in my Instagram, on my email, as well as in the comment section where you asked me to elaborate more about the blueprint and you had your own personal queries. So in this video, I shall be talking, I shall be summarizing all of them. So what I shall talk about in this video, I'll give you a blueprint and an ideal timeline to follow over the next five months. I'll take up your common queries and myths and give my take on that. And we'll discuss how to stay motivated and how to identify show topics yourself rather than asking a faculty for them. So let us begin our discussion here. Blueprint and timeline, how to plan. I'll be giving you a model plan. Uh, you can customize it as per your requirement. If you are already doing your preparation, keep doing that. But listening to this video, you can take out the, utilize, uh, the, the key points from that and uh, apply those principles and you can smoothen your existing preparation as well. And in case you are not yet started or you are feeling your preparation is inadequate, you can uh, follow the instructions which I'll be giving here. So here we go. Now, if we talk about the timeline, there will be broadly two categories of students. One, those who will be giving and sitting for the Central Institute exams in November and December and then giving NEET PG. And the second category, those who will be directly giving the NEET PG exam. So you need to have uh, your preferences and your timeline accordingly. So let's consider the first category. Suppose you are eligible and you are giving the November exams of AIMS, PGI and JIPMA. So the entire duration which you have, you can roughly divide it into two or three parts. The first part of your division will be the time period from say 16th August to 30th September. It will be approximately 45 days. In this 45 days period, you are supposed to do one complete reading of all the 19 subjects. See, if you are already on to your preparation and you are already doing the preparation, please keep following it. But if you are at crossroads and feeling lost how I should be preparing and how I should be uh, what should be the timeline this is just a help from my side to to make you know that what is the weightage you should be giving and how much time you actually have you can take out important things useful things from this timeline and add it customize your existing preparation so this is not the be all this is just a model plan which I am giving you you can always change it according to your uh, preferences. So in 45 days, your one complete reading of all 19 subjects should be done. It should be strictly according to the weightage of that subject. So what should be the weightage based upon the NEET PG, recent NEET PG exams? I have given a rough calculation here. Medicine and surgery are the biggest subjects. So you will give four days to each. So four days minimum to medicine and to surgery. So approximately eight days will be required for these two subjects. Next are your OPS, gynae, pathology and pharmacology from where you will give three days each. So nine days will be required for them. PSM, micropedes, ophthalmology, anatomy, biochemistry will require two days each. So six into two, that is 12 days. FMT, ortho, physiology, ENT will require 1.5 days each. So total of six days. Skin, psychiatry, radio, anesthesia, the smaller subjects, they will require maximum of one day each, not more than this. And so the total duration will come to four days. If you calculate, if you add all of them, it comes out to total of 39 days. So total 39 days. What it means is your six to seven days are bonus. In those six to seven days, you can intermittently give your mock exams. You can take small break. You can... Uh, work on your weaker subjects. How will you work on your weaker subjects? In case you have any weak subject, if it is a big subject, you will add plus one day. Like I was a student when I was an aspirant, uh, my OPS gynae was weak. So if I were in your place, I would add plus one to OPS gynae and make it four days. In case of any small subject, you will add half a day. So subjects like psychiatry, subjects like uh, anesthesia, radiology, even if they are weak in your case, you will not add complete day. You will add only half a day to them. And what is must in this first reading? Reading one complete but rapid re reading of your notes. Notes are very important. You will focus on recent papers of NEED PG and one or two recent papers of AIMS and PGI. 
and in the first reading the recent papers need to be read subject wise later on you can do them either selectively or you can do the complete papers but first reading done subject wise is always better and subject wise test or question bank you need to do only in weak subjects see ideally you should be doing in all of them but we have to adapt according to the limited time we have and so only in weak subjects preferably bigger subjects or middle level subjects you will add subject wise test or question bank anything else you want to do anything extra study material you have that is optional but this is mandatory now coming to the uh, after this 45 days are over and one complete reading is done the first uh, second period will start that is 1st october to 24th october that will be 25 days in these 25 days you are supposed to do one complete revision so your first revision will will require approximately half of this time that is 25 days aur isme kya karna hai see now the aims and pgi exams are just around the corner so you will do fast reading plus you will do the topic preference you will pick up topics in each subject and read them according to their weightage in aims pgi and jipma like if you are preparing for pgi your biochemistry will require a bit more time than a subject like psm because pgi has more questions from biochemistry compared to psm jipma if you are targeting genetics will become important and so on you will not do the complete question bank or a subject wise test here only revise the marked questions which had gone wrong or which you had marked for later reading at that time you will add updates of faculty members i have used the word faculty members here because what will happen is as exams come all these telegram groups and all these places will be full of updates knowledge is important but end of the day you can't remember everything and with limited time you should know only what is important irrespective of your coaching institute whatever coaching institute you have joined you are all most of you are already following their channels pages and insta profiles and whatever the, if it is posted by faculty member then only you are supposed to read it if it is has been posted by some random unknown admin of a telegram group or by some fellow student you can leave it because time is limited and you have to practice and solve the recent central institute questions as well june paper of jipmer had 22 questions direct coming from the december paper so if in a paper like this any repeat question gets wrong you are out of the race so solve the recent papers really well preferably go by the video solutions if you can and uh, revision 1 so summary is the revision 1 will focus on your aims pgi and jipmer it will focus on these exams now uh, 25th october to 1st uh, uh, november your one week is entirely your own you can focus on your pgi exam will be coming so you can focus on that preparation so the november month it will be exam season you will focus on the central institute exam being given no neat pg preparation needs to be done specifically but you need to remember that any reading you are doing for aims pg or jipmer will be indirectly useful for neat pg also like if you have done alzheimer disease properly for aims that alzheimer disease will be useful for neat pg as well so uh, it is not that you are leaving the neat pg preparation you are just focus is shifting to the topics which are more frequently asked here and as soon as the november exam season is done and you have given your aims pg and jipma december month comes you will do revision number 2 which will entirely be focused on neat pg so in one month you need to summarize Uh, how to go about it again we'll talk as the exams come near so this should be your broad timeline if you are eligible for uh, central institutes and giving them if you are not giving aims pg and jipmer and only giving neat pg exam then you have a bit more time in that case 16th august to 15th october time you will take that is around 2 months instead of 45 days and in that period you will do one reading and instead of the weightage which i gave you you can add half to one day in each subject so medicine will become 5 to 5 and half days uh, surgery will become 5 to 5 and half days gynae will become 4 days instead of 3 because you have more time here mid october to 30th november in 45 days you will do first revision december to first week of january you can do second revision and if you are smart enough in a seven day time you can sneak in a third revision as well it is all doable again the last month revision and how to go about it the topic based revision things we'll be talking about later right now my focus is on giving you a timeline as so many of you have requested me in the comments in the last video as well as in my inbox and on my insta page
so this is the broad timeline so after this blueprint let us take some common queries you have and my take upon them now query number 1 this is not a single query it has been sent in different language by so many of you that uh, you have asked me that whenever i give a grand test subject wise test or a mock exam there is always some new thing which i find which i did not know everyone says you keep adding them to notes till what time and to what extent i should keep adding now you need to understand how the what is the purpose of mock exams or these uh, grand tests the purpose is not to threaten you the purpose is not to throw you off balance when you give a grand test or a mock exam number 1 you sit for the exam you see whether you are able to focus and finish the paper in 3 and half hours or not so first thing is time management secondly first question is coming from anatomy another is from physiology third is from pediatrics fourth is from medicine so you have to make a transition from question 1 to 3 4 5 6 and so on this is a process when you practice sitting at your home then you are not doing it in a time uh, based uh, based deadline and you are solving only a subject wise question when you sit and there is a mix of questions your brain evolves it learns how to adapt to different kinds of situations and that exam practice is what you get from that grand test or mock exam so that is why again indirectly it helps you in preparing for the exam and thirdly once the mock exam is done you look at the results how many positive how many negative you analyze your strong subject your weak subject and you work upon them grand test uh, early parts of my career when i started te teaching i was involved in making a lot of grand tests and mock exams i have made them in the past and so i know how they are made every grand test or mock test has some questions taken from the recent papers some taken from older papers some questions are easy one liners some from the notes which we taught which we teach which have been taught to you by faculties and a certain portion is deliberately kept difficult so that nobody uh, no student starts feeling okay i know everything so over confidence ko prevent karne ke liye there is always a component now every mock exam will have different levels of difficulty and so it is unfair to compare mock exam of one entrance or of one institute with another but the principle remains the same having said that when you are giving a mock exam and you have a horizon of 6 month 8 month or 9 month then after each grand test you find something new you add it to your notes but as you move closer to the exam stop adding any new thing from grand test to your notes this is very important you need to stop doing it from mid september onwards so another one month maybe you give grand test mock exam you find a new thing you add it to your note you give a cbt a computer based test of any uh, institute you can add the uh, additional points to your notes but random grand test 20 grand test you solve in the next 5 months suppose you find 20 multiplied by 20 new points 400 new points you are not supposed to do that add only the faculty updates after september onwards because there is no end to knowledge there is no end to information and there is very thin likelihood that things which have been asked in a grand test will be asked directly in the paper they are meant to test you they are meant to tell you where you stand nothing more than that after september don't add new things see when i say don't add new things i am talking in general you want to add you uh, you have time you feel confident you feel it helps you you are most welcome to do it this is the general pattern which i am telling you the general thing which i feel from from a average student's point of view average does not mean your mental status average means in general a lot of people again ask me sir i am an average student can i crack exam every student who has done mbbs do not call yourself average if you have done mbbs if you have passed your mbbs you are not average average is all in the mind if you are well prepared you can crack any entrance exam that is what i feel i have been a so called average student in my mbbs post my uh, entrance entrance exam onwards till now i have done better than an average student would do and anybody can do that so please stop calling yourself average and sport so to summarize be smart if you have to add points do in moderation stop adding new information from september onwards and september onwards if you have to add information it should be from the updates posted by faculty members any institute you are following any uh, thread you are following if it is a post directly uh, directly posted by the faculty member then it is important for your exam another common query i find is there is discrepancy between uh, information or a question given in my notes 
एंड इन माई क्वेश्चन बैंक विच वन टू फॉलो इन जनरल provided your notes are updated and not 2017 16 2018 notes provided they are updated always follow notes over your guides and question bank because notes are taught by the primary faculty themselves they are responsible for whatever they say when i take a class everything i teach in a class i am responsible for that but a question bank is uh, sometimes only edited by faculty members sometimes it is uh, contributed by faculty members but there are Uh, typing mistakes there are typographical errors so question banks are liable to have some errors in case of any discrepancy go with the class notes in case you are not satisfied feel free to ask your uh, relevant faculty member about the clarification there is no harm politely asking that a certain thing has been given here and certain thing has been given there because end of the day even a single question can decide your rank so my take on this is notes are more reliable than question banks i'm not talking about any particular institute i'm talking about all institutes in general provided your notes are updated and recent older notes however they are prior to have old information and if you are reading older notes or uh, photostat notes or notes downloaded from telegram you need to update them because recent things have a more high likelihood of being asked moving to the next question what about controversial questions now you, you need to understand that controversial questions are always there in any exam many of the controversies are unnecessary many of the uh, controversies arise because the information changes like guidelines change and some people keep on following the older guidelines some follow new guideline controversial questions always go by the latest reference available the latest reference suppose harrison says something nelson says something and uh, a standard book like robin says something in the latest edition that is your final word wikipedia google or your uh, pubmed uh, case reports they are not to be considered as reference materials end of the day there will always be controversy if you are asked drug of choice for uh, absence seizure some would say ethosuximide some would say valproate it is an age old debate there are no sides here uh, some would say less than 2 years some would say more than 2 years these are age old controversies they were there when i was a mbba student they are there today they will be there 10 years later as well because most of the guidelines are also ambiguous about them so you need to follow the latest again since i talked about absence seizure uh, what do i teach i teach that ethosuximide is the drug of choice because uh, most of the standard guidelines talk about them having said that there are some textbooks which also talk about valproate being more common so again it is a matter of which one you follow and don't worry absence seizure question has been asked so many times it is not going to be asked in the exam uh, but take a balanced view go by the latest references and trust one source which you feel is more reliable that is the summary of it there are no easy answers to this thing medicine is ever changing and there will always be controversy so my take is they were there in 2001 controversies will be there in 2021 and they will be there in 2041 trust the source which gives you authentic reference written in guide or wikipedia or pubmed case reports are not references moving to the next query how to identify show topics very easy you solve recent papers any topic getting repeated often is your high yielding topic my take on this any topic repeated more than once in last two to three papers or more than two times in last five papers has a high likelihood of being asked so especially in central institute exam so apply this rule and start working on that the otherwise important topic list every faculty provides that and i will be also adding my my bit in pediatrics in a few uh, days from now so this is a very smooth easy way to identify the trending show topics covid is your important topic nephrotic syndrome guidelines have recently changed new drug has come that is your important topic imca guidelines in pediatrics are important and so on so anything which is trending has a high likelihood of being asked now this is a very important query which i often find people asking sir i start well for few days then my tempo falls and i start thinking nothing is going to happen i will not get selected i get demotivated so how to stay motivated for the next 5 months now how to stay motivated you can look externally or you can look internally external motivation means somebody coming and telling you internal motivation is you train your mind to motivate itself how can you train that there are five ways 
I have talked about it, this in my Instagram video a few months back also and I'll repeat what I said at that time. There are broadly five types of motivation. One is your positive motivation. Positive motivation means think of positive things. If you get selected, what will happen? You will get into a good place. You will do PG in your branch of choice. Your quality of life will improve. Uh, you will have a lot of prestige. You will be satisfied in life. So a positive motivation to stay positively motivated. You can watch inspirational movies. You can put inspirational quotes. Lot of people put motivational quotes as well. I personally feel there is an overdose of motivation these days. So I will not go much into it. But positive motivation means something is positively motivating you asking you to get up. Positive motivation has a problem that it stay. It is a very short lived and you keep giving it to yourself. The second is your negative motivation. Negative motivation means if you don't get selected, what will happen? People will question your ability. You will have self doubts and all these problematic things like milestones and cyclosporin classification, uh, cephalosporin classification, you will have to read again. So to prevent those unpleasant scenario, you have to get selected in the in the upcoming exam that is known as negative motivation for some people positive motivation works for some negative motivation works and for some people the third type of motivation works what I call as financial motivation what is financial motivation see money cannot buy happiness true movies also show the same but end of the day money is very important you most of you are from financially well off families but end of the day it is your dad or mom's money when you will be in a good place, eventually you will have good stipend and post your PG, you will earn well. That will be that earning potential will be your achievement in life. Money cannot buy happiness, but it is always better to cry in a five star hotel than to cry in a hut. So if financial motivation is an important thing for you, if you belong to that uh, school of thought, again, it can be one way of motivating yourself. I'm not saying money is everything. What I'm saying is how you can train your mind to stay motivated. You can mix and match all of these. The fourth motivation is emotional motivation. Think that if you are an emotional person and well connected and very attached to your family, say to yourself, if I get selected, my name will be everywhere. My parents, my siblings, if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend, they will feel proud of you. So. When your dad or your mom sees that you're, you have been selected in topmost institute and you're giving an interview somewhere, try to visualize yourself. The happiness that will be there in your father's face or your mother's face, no money, no financial motivation can ever match that. So use it as a way that I will sit on that podium and I will put a thank you post thanking my parents, my teachers, everybody. That is emotional motivation. Let it motivate you. And fifth is vengeful motivation. If you like gangs of Asipur, if you like um, all those uh, revenge dramas and movies, imagine yourself as the person who has always been wronged in life. You have got bad results in your MBBS because you, uh, you had bad luck. You were asked wrong questions, everything wrong happening in your life. This is one place where everything gets sorted. If you did not get good numbers in theory because your writing was bad, if you do not speak well in vivas and you got less numbers because of that this is one redemption place 300 questions or 250 or 200 questions same for everyone you mark more than others you are ultimately victorious so one result will wipe out whatever has happened in the past another way of motivating yourself so these are the five types of motivation as i say take your pick mix and match but stay motivated and result matters and eventually, remember that it won't be easy. There will be odd tough days where you will feel demotivated. Just hang on there. There will be days of doubt. Divert your mind, take a small break and then get back to preparation. Focus and consistency is the key. If you are focused enough and you are consistent in your efforts, you stick to your timeline, whatever you have made, you will do through. You will get through and no substitute for hard work, but Smart planned work makes it easier for you to succeed. So combine your hard work along with smart study and focus study and there is no reason why you should not do well in, in any exam. So this is me Sandeep Sharma signing off. Thank you very much.
all the best for your exams. I will be back with more posts intermittently to help you out.